Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use a weaving loom. Um, this is a square loom, it's got 18 pegs on each side, and you can make different things. You can make pot holders with them if you have the right type of fabric. Um, and I would probably add an insulation layer and double layer them as well, like take two and put insulation in between and sew them up. But these are really, really great to use as coasters as well. Um, and I'll talk more about the, you know, the content of the fiber and stuff like that. And just, you just need to be careful. If you use the kit I used, which I'll put a link for in the description bar, um, if you use that, you don't want to use these as real pot holders because they, one, it says for decorative use only, and two, it's because this is not, um, you can't use this on hot surfaces because the fabric content, like the fiber content of this is, I would say probably, it's man-made, I think it's probably polyester, um, that will melt. You don't want to do that, so be very, very careful. In order to make these, you will need the following. You're going to need some fabric loops. You can buy these um, separately, or mine came in a kit, but um, you just need to be aware of your whatever they're made out of. Now the this fabric, because you can see it's just strips of fabric that stretch up on itself, um, or that curl up on itself. These, this is not cotton. I can tell it's not cotton by feeling it. Um, I would say it's probably polyester. Um, if you use these, you cannot use these as actual pot holders. These are more decorative, or you can use them as coasters, which is what I'm going to use them for. But just be aware of that. Um, if you want to use them as an actual pot holder, you do need cotton and you, and really they need to be at least double thick. So you'd have to take two of them and sew them together. So I would say probably not use them as actual pot holders, but you can hang them up. Um, and they do look cool, but I would be very careful because you'll burn yourself if you're not careful and don't use these. Cause if you put this on something hot and it's a, you know, this is a fake fiber, um, or a man-made create your know, man-made fiber, it's, it's going to melt and you don't want that. You will need a hook. My kit came with this. It looks like a very long crochet hook. If you, if you made your own loom, um, you could use a Tunisian crochet hook too, because they are long. They usually have a, something on the end, but they are long with a hook at the end. So keep that in mind. My loom has 18 pegs on each side, so that's what I'm using. And I'll show you the kit that I I bought. So it's this kit here. Let's see if I can get it back far enough. There you go. So um, it's the Color Zone brand. I bought this at Michael's. Um, it was over on like an end cap over near um, where they have like the kids crafts there um, it's where like the Crayola stuff is like crayons and things like that so you can do that now this loom or this kit came with the loom which is seven and a quarter inches square or 18.4 centimeters square you get the weaving hook the loops and the instructions as for the number of loops you need you'll need 36 you can do it in um, a variety of different um, patterns, I guess. It just depends on what you like. I'm going to show you the one that I am using. Um, that I'm, obviously, I'm going to show you the one that I'm using for this demonstration. But when I show you the other one that I made at, after I'm done with this one, I will tell you how to um, how I positioned the the loops. So if you want to recreate that one, you can. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is take your loops and you one direction. So for this one, I'm just going to go horizontal, but we're just stretching out the bands over there. I am, I'm going to put the pink uh, loops at the edges just so I have that, but and then I'm going to just start putting these on there. 
And I'm going to alternate. I'm going to alternate um, the pink and the green. I feel like that one, oh, that one's extra wide. I was like, it felt like it was a little, I thought maybe there were two of them in there together. So you can see, let me pull this up so it's a little closer. Okay, here's a little bit more of a close up. So you just take your piece of fabric and we loop it around there, stretch it out. So on the other side, I just kind of go like that and let it go. Okay, so I'm going to keep alternating the green and the purple. Be careful, it can get away from you if you're not careful. <laughs> problem is. See that one? The fabric, it didn't curl right there, so just check it. So it should look like that on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and just keep alternating the purple and the green, and I will come back once I'm done and show you what we do next. Okay, so here we go. That's what it looks like. And they're on there nice and secure. There's the edge. Um, you may want to take a look and just make sure that none of them are really, really twisted or heavily twisted. Because um, I find that they lay a little flatter if you, or it lays a little nicer if they are, um, they don't have a bunch of twists within it. So if like, Let's just do this one for instance. I'll make it twist. So, if I had twisted it like that, okay. Can you see how it twists there? So, all you'd have to do is just have to untwist it with your fingers so that way it lays even. You don't have to be like super super precise or anything. It's just what I'm doing. Okay, now we're going to do the weaving part. So I am doing the pink ones at the edge. So the first one I'm going to do is going to start with a pink one. All you do is you're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. And you can see I'm going over over or under both loops of whatever color it is I'm using for this pattern. I There are other ways you can do it, um, but those are a little bit more complex and I, I want something a little bit more simple. Okay, so once you have your hook in there, I'll go ahead and just turn it up like that, so that way the hook is up, upright. And you can make sure that everything's fine, that you are alternating ones. Because of the way that I laid it out, all of the purple ones should be above for this for this um, row. And then of course the, this pink is above and this pink is below. So you grab your loop and you just attach it to the hook like that. And I'm just going to hold it tight for now. And then I turn it back. And you start. You start um, just pulling it back through there. Once you get about three, or about four or five pegs in, go ahead and just put it over the peg that you're holding it to, or that it's going to be on. Make sure that it doesn't fall off there keep on going and then you put it on the peg on the other side the opposite peg so this is the first peg again if they are really twisted or anything you can um, you know just adjust it with your fingers okay for the next row it's it's much easier if you lay it flat but because I am showing you I need to hold it up so you can see it so you see here we went over okay but for the next row, we are going to go under, and then we're going to go over that one. So we're basically doing the opposite of whatever we did before. Okay. 
You can use your fingers to help if you need to. Be careful not to split. See how I just did that? Don't go over or under through the middle. You can for some patterns, but we're not doing that for this time. So there you go. So you should be at the opposite, like this next row is going to be woven in the opposite way that the first one was. So you can see here, I was under it, the strand was under it, but now I'm over it. Same goes for there, and the purple is now up where, or I'm sorry, the purple is down below where the green is now above the, the hook. Now we are going to use the next color, I'm just going to do green. Go ahead and put that on your hook and then I turn the hook back that way you could have left it that way I always just flip it up it's a little easier for me just pull it start pulling it through and bring it over the peg you can use your palm to kind of keep it in place see if it pops up like that just smooth it down And then use your hook to put it over that side and have your fingers smooth it down. You're always going to want to use your um, fingers to bring um, the row that you just worked down closer to the row, the beginning row. Um, and you can even move these, this part up if you want, but it's fine. Now we're going to do the um, the same thing, just an opposite. So we were below the first one. We're going to go above it like that. And then you just keep going this way pretty much until you're at the end. Now I will say, you know, like I mentioned before, it is easier if it's flat on the table. Just before you put your next loop on, just make sure that you, you know, have um, taken a good look at it so you know what you're doing. So you make sure that it's the right way, otherwise you're going to end up with it not being woven um, the way that you may want. So, I am using purple for my third. Then you just twist. We're putting it over the third peg. I realize I say purple. I hope that actually does look purple to you because it's pur it is purple, but I know sometimes they will look green. Now you can see I did accidentally get that in there um, in between the pegs. I put the hook there. So I'm just going to slide it back until I can get it off of there. Slide down. Now I find that it's a little easier for me once I get a little further in to weave up here because you can see there's a little space here where the pegs aren't getting in the way and you're, you know that way you won't have the problem that I just did. So what I'm going to do is just alternate the purple and the green or the blue and the green if that's what you're seeing until I get to the end and the last one is going to be pink. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just remember to always do the opposite of whatever you did before. So where I went above, I'm going to go want to go below this time. So, so I went below, above, and then just alternate until the end. And it creates this, you know, like this basket weave kind of pattern. So I'm going to continue to do that. Okay, so you can see I just did that. And I was going to show you, since I did start up here, how to um, kind of make it work for you. So you can kind of just 
make it go at an angle and that's fine. You know, there's a lot of tension on this, so you should be okay, but you may want to just hold on to that if you need to. And then um, if you want to kind of correct, see how this one twists right here? You can just take it off with your fingers and give it a little bit of a, you can just, um, you know, turn it around with your fingers if it's just the one area, but it doesn't really matter. That's just my personal preference on how I want it to look. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and continue and I will be back when I am at the end. Um, I am going to just do, um, alternating green and purple until I get to the last, the last peg. And that's going to be pink. All right. I will be right back. Okay, so I have finished weaving in all of my loops. Now, go ahead, before we do anything else, go ahead and just check uh, what you've done. Make sure nothing is really twisted. Um, check both sides. Just to, so that way it looks good to you. Okay? And now, in order to take this from just being on the loom into something that you can hold without it completely unraveling all over the place, what we have to do is bind off the edges. Now, there are um, there's you know a couple of different ways or maybe more to do it, but essentially I think the best way to do it is to make a crochet chain. Now, if you don't know how to crochet, that's fine. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. But if you do, this is going to be very very familiar to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hook, we're going to insert it through the middle between the two strands of of the first uh, loop that's on the first peg. Oh, and you can start wherever you want, but I will say this, wherever your wherever you start, that is where like your loop to hang it up is gonna be, so I prefer to start in the corner, but that's up to you. Okay, so go ahead and insert it there, and then you're taking it off of the peg. And then you're going to insert your hook into the next loop take it off of the peg as well and then we're going to crochet it. So all you do is you just turn your hook back that way and we're working back that way. Now I know how to crochet so that is not hard for me and I am pretty comfortable with making sure that nothing is going to fall off my hook. However, if you are not comfortable with that, go ahead and use your fingers. So insert that there. You can even pull it off with your fingers. You pull it off there, insert your hook, and then take your finger, see if I can grab it without doing it upside down. Grab the first loop and just pull it over like that. And I'm gonna keep going. I'm actually gonna sit it down because I know I'm making some, some noise. Let's see. turn it away, turn it so in a way you can see. So we're just going to turn it that way. Again, just go through the center of the next hoop, pull it off of the peg. Be careful not to break the peg. Okay. So you can see the edge that it's making. So it's making this little piece here. So just keep going. And if you do know how to crochet, it'll be a lot quicker. At least I think it is, because you don't really need your other hand involved. Plus, I think the edge um, looks a little nicer without you having to kind of adjust it. I mean, you can adjust it to make it look nice and even, but it's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and just um, crochet it. So if they become twisted like that or overlapping, just unoverlap them. And then we're working all the way to the end of this row. And again, use, use your fingers to help if you need to. 
No shame in that. Okay, now we're at the end. We're going to do the same thing. Then we're going to turn the loom because now we're going to work on this row. And it will be easier if you lay it flat. I'm holding it up so you can see better. But again, we just put the um, the hook in the same way we've been doing, so into the middle, and then crocheting to pull through. So that's what that looks like. And then just keep going. Now you can see that it's starting to shrink up on you and that's fine, but you will need to be um, careful and watch your pegs. Make sure that your loops are not getting too loose because you don't want them to pop off of the pegs. Just keep an eye on it. You can, if you are able to do the crochet um, like I've been doing, you can use your hand to keep tension on it. But if you are using your um, other hand to help you, you know, bind off, what you're probably going to want to do is take is take one of the loops from the corner and stretch it out back here. Um, it doesn't matter, matter which one because we're going to um, stretch it out, you know, stretch it back into shape afterwards, so it's okay. So you'll do that for this for this row. Now if you do happen to, you know, knock one of these, um, the strands off of the peg, you can, um, you can just weave it back in. It shouldn't be too hard if that's the only one, but you will want to secure whatever, whatever you can. So if you, let's say I had lost this one, like it just fell off, I would secure this one before I started working on that. And you just want to do that so that way multiple rows don't come tumbling off. Okay. Then we turn. Do the same thing on this corner. And I want to show you this part at least because this is, I think, probably one of the trickier parts um, because I think that you're more likely to have things fall off at this point. Now, again, these are these are looser. Like these are becoming a little looser. If you want, you can stretch the other corner over. So you take the corner and put it over here somewhere. Um, I'm okay for now, and I can also use my hand to hold that, hold the tension in place. So if you are able to crochet with one hand and you don't need your, um, your other hand, then that's what I would do. It just makes it a little easier, and once you get the hang of it, it's, you know, it'll make it... It'll make it go by a lot quicker if you don't have to um, adjust and you know and take and take um, the time to pull those over and all of that. So it's up to you. Ooh, I did almost that one. If you need to, you can pull this part back, pull the first one back. You can hold it even if you want when you're doing it. this fabric that the the little craft loops or whatever they're calling them um, I think they call them colorful loops but they are a little slippy slippery okay 
Now see these could probably pull off of there really simply, but I'm going to hold on to it. But if you want, go ahead and just move that over here somewhere. So if you've got it down here, I would just pull it, pull it up here, but make sure you put it towards the end. It's whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. But you, you see, there's not really a whole lot of space anymore. It shrank up against it. So if your hook still fits in there, you can just, of course, make it move whenever you need to. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's just keep on going. Hopefully that's not too loud on your ears. Okay, we are almost done, yay! Okay, so now go ahead and take that loop off, pull that just a little bit. You don't want to pull it too tight, but what we're going to do now is just adjust so that this little loop that's at this end is not there, or you can leave it if you want, but all I'm doing is stretching that way. I'm just going to stretch the work and then stretch it this way too. And I like to stretch a diagonal, just doing a lot of stretching. If you, I just popped that off of the loop, but if you pull it, it should not come through, but you may want to like stick your finger in there and uh, to keep it from, just in case, because we are going to secure it a little bit better than that. Okay, and just pull. Okay, once you have it all kind of straightened out the way you want, you need to secure this. I mean, it will stay on its own, as you can see, but I would like it to be just a little bit more secure. So I'm going to take my hook and go under this strand. See right here? There's a V shape right there. I'm going to go right underneath there. Grab this part and pull it over. Pull up just a little bit. Then grab, like, hold that with my finger. Grab the loop again like the first loop and pull it up and then pull it tight and you can take the hook off of there so it makes a little bit more of a knot there again I'm not using these for actual um, pot holders so they're probably not going to get too messed up or anything I'm not going to hand wash them if necessary but um, they're not too bad and I guess if they really did like it did fall apart you could just make it again really quickly it wouldn't be that bad Okay, you have your pot holder, and that is the, um, you end up with these stripes, the way that I did it this time. Here is another one that I made. And this one, um, on one, one direction, I only used white, and on the next one, I alternated the pink and the yellow. So I know the camera's kind of blowing the color out a little bit, but that's what it looks like. And then the end looks like that. I think that's really kind of cute. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you guys are having a great one. I'll see you all next time. Bye!